sir. Baka po pwede pong gawin niya na lang pong host po ang isa po sa kanila. Oo, oh, sino yan? Sino? Um, ano po, bali po, pipindutin niyo po yung picture po ni Maria Aubrey Herrera tapos may tatlo pong dot po doon. Tapos oh. po, talagay niyo po ay make co-host or make host po. Para po, sila na lang po mag-share screen po. O, oh, sige. Salamat po. Oh, yun na. Okay na. Kita po ba sir? Yung... Okay. Receive ka na. You can start now, Rod. Good afternoon everyone. I will be the first group po to present about pregnancy and delivery. So, I'm Marie Aubrey Herrera. My group mates are Lumbre Lumbera Brent, Palas, Julia Nicole, and Perez Daddy. Trigger warning. The following topic may contain triggering or sensitive content, including pregnancy, abortion, rape, nudity, and graphic image. So I will be the first reporter but and the first topic that we will be discussing is the definition of pregnancy. Oh. Thank you. So, the definition of pregnancy is the physio physiological condition of having a developing embryo or fetus in the body from the time of fertilization upon ovum by the sperm after intercourse until the birth of the child. <clears throat> so, your pregnancy is defined as the period of time between the fertilization of the ovum, not after intercourse, because it's not naman ensured na kapag nag-intercourse ay pregnant agad. So, it's after fertilization and until the birth of the child. And not to be uh, confused with delivery kasi yung delivery, yun yung birth ng child. While pregnancy is yung pagdadala ng uh, embryo or fetus. <coughs> pregnancy usually lasts about 40 weeks or 9 months as measured from the last menstrual period of delivery. Healthcare providers refer to three segments of pregnancy called trimesters. So there are three segments of pregnancy called trimesters. The first trimester is the first month to third month. Second trimester is sixth month to a fourth month to sixth month. And third trimester is the seventh month to ninth month. So there are various hormones involved sa uh, pregnancy para uh, ma-regulate yung body ng pregnant woman para makapag uh, uh, para makapag pregnancy siya ng healthy. So first one is the human chorionic gonadotropin hormone or HCG. This hormone is only made during pregnancy. It's made almost exclusively in the placenta. HCG hormone levels found in the mother's blood and urine rise a lot during the first trimester. 
Amy Priya part ng ano siya vomiting often linked to pregnancy. So during pregnancy kaya nakaroon ng ibat ibang symptoms tulad ng pagkahilo, ng tendency na magvomit and changes in physicality like the breasts and hands ay dahil sa sa pagproduce ng excess hormones. One of them is the HCG hormone. Next one is the human placental lactogen or HPL. This hormone is also known as human chorionic somatomamotropin speed by the placenta. Gives situation to the fetus and also stimulates milk glands in the breast for breastfeeding. So the HPL or human placental lactogen is the one responsible for uh, nourishing the fetus. In the time na so, uh, womb until uh, ipanganak can kailangan na ng breast milk. Next one is estrogen. Group of hormones helps develop the female sexual traits. It is normally formed in the ovaries. It is also made by the placenta during pregnancy and in the age of pregnancy. Next is progesterone. This hormone is made by the ovaries and by the placenta during pregnancy. It stimulates the thickening of the uterine line for implantation of a fertilized egg. So this one is more active during the first phases of pregnancy and the fertilized egg to be developed into an embryo. Then prolactin, which is the main hormone needed to trigger the production of breast milk. It can lower this mammary glands with pressure this. So prolactin is the hormone responsible for uh, breast milk. Then oxytocin. This only appears in significant amounts towards the end of pregnancy. Its levels rise when labor starts triggering contractions. Then the last hormone that's involved is relaxin. And from the name relaxin, uh, you can you can guess uh, what this uh, hormone does. So relaxin from the word relax. Uh, relaxin levels are highest during the first trimester of pregnancy, but it's present all throughout. It has several roles, including prohibiting contraction of the uterine muscles to prevent premature birth. Relaxin's name gives a clue to its more important roles. It relaxes blood vessels, increasing blood flow to the placenta and kidneys. This helps the mother's body cope with the increased demand for oxygen and nutrients from the developing baby. Relaxin also helps the mother's body prepare for birth. It relaxes joints in the pelvis and softens and widens the cervix to make delivery of the baby easier. So relaxing from the word relax, uh, tinutulungan niya para ma-ease kahit uh, konti lang yung delivery ng baby and para mapadali yung pregnancy and uh, paglilabor ng uh, woman. Then next topic is the physical evidence of pregnancy or yung signs and symptoms to tell if a woman is pregnant. Symptoms of pregnancy may vary from person to person. Some common symptoms include the following. So, may ibang symptoms pwede siyang uh, common sa ibang babae, pero sa iba ay hindi. So, it varies from your genetics and uh, where you're from. <clears throat> First one is slight bleeding. One study shows as many as 25% of pregnant women experience slight bleeding or spotting that is lighter in color than normal menstrual blood. This is common in the first 12 weeks of pregnancy. Then tender and swollen breasts or nipples, which is, uh, nga, as mentioned earlier, is caused by the sudden high production of hormones. So na to an yung uh, external parts of the body, especially the breasts and nipples. Women, women may notice this symptom as early as 22 weeks after conception. Then fatigue. During pregnancy, the body pumps more blood to carry nutrients to the fetus. Because uh, dahil uh, dalawang, dalawang organism na yung minimintay ng body, the woman and the developing embryo. So, so the pregnant woman is more prone to fatigue or pagkapagod. Fatigue may be experienced as early as one week after conception. And headaches, the sudden rise of hormones may trigger headaches early in pregnancy. And nausea and or vomiting, which is also uh, referred to as morning sickness, this symptom can start anywhere from two to eight weeks after conception and can continue throughout pregnancy. Then uh, one of the most one of the most common symptoms, which is food cravings or paglilihe or aversions, which is yung uh, kapag may paborito ang pagkain, tapos during pregnancy parang ayaw mo na siyang kainin. Sudden cravings for developing a dislike of favorite foods 
are both common throughout pregnancy. A food craving or aversion can last throughout the entire pregnancy. And then mood swings, hormonal changes during pregnancy often cause sharp mood swings. These can occur as early as a few weeks after conception. And then for the last evidence of pregnancy, which is the most obvious, is the protruding of the belly. First signs of a baby bump will show up early in the second trimester, between weeks 12 and 16, although it may vary depending on one's weight and height. Um, so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Brent Lumbera, and I will report this part. Um, last and previous menstrual cycle. Um, in order to calculate your menstrual cycle, you'll need to learn how to track your cycle first. Um, you'll need to, you, all you need to do is mark down when your period started on a calendar for a few months in order to figure out how to count your period cycle days and to calculate the average length of your menstrual cycle. Um, mark the first day of your period on the calendar. The first day of your period is day one. Day one of your menstrual cycle. Starting on the first day of your period, start counting. The day before your next period is the last day of your menstrual cycle. That's when you stop counting. That's how many days you had in your menstrual cycle that month. Um, for instance, if you got if you if you got your period on June 5 and your next period came on July 2. Your cycle length was 27 days that month. If you do this for a few months, you'll know how to count your period cycle days and you'll be able to figure out your average cycle length. Do this by adding the number of days in each cycle. So parang nag average ka lang. Bale, i-add mo lang yung mga days ng iyong cycle, tapos kung ilang beses yun, i-divide mo lang. This will give you the average number of days between each period or your average cycle length. Now, figuring out when your next period will come will be easy. So yun, madali nyo nang malalaman kung halimbawa magkakaroon na kayo o hindi pa. Starting on the first day of your last period, just count out the average number of days between your periods a.k.a. your average cycle length that you calculated. And that gives you the projected start date of your next period. So, ayun, punta naman tayo sa size of the uterus. Dahil about pregnancy nga ito, uh, the average uterus, which is also known as a woman's womb or mother's womb, measures 3 to 4 inches by 2.5 inches. It has the shape and dimensions dimensions of an upside down pear. So yung parang ano prutas. A variety of medical conditions can cause the uterus to increase in size including pregnancy or uterine fibroids. Um, women may feel a heaviness in their lower abdomen or notice their abdomen protruding as their uterus enlarges. Kaya mapapansin nyo, pagka sa mga buntis, parang lagi silang ngalay. The uterus normally fits into the pelvis. During pregnancy, the growing baby will cause the uterus to increase in size 1,000 times from the size of a clenched fist to a watermelon or larger by the time you deliver. So yun, ganun kalaki yung parang pina-example. Isang kamao to watermelon. Sobrang laki nun. There are a variety of reasons why the belly could be measuring large, like swelling or fluid retention. Um, it is a common problem during pregnancy or simply being a bigger woman before pregnancy. Um, the most serious cause of having a too large tummy, however, is gestate gestational diabetes. When a woman develops diabetes during pregnancy, sorry po for the interruption, uh, may tumawag lang po. When a woman 
develops diabetes during pregnancy, her baby receives too much sugar, causing him to be bigger than he normally would. This can also cause excess amniotic fluid, which increases belly size too. If the doctor is concerned about the patient's belly, also yon kap kapag minapapansin na irregularity yung inyong doctor, uh, he or she will order an ultrasound to check on the baby. The ultrasound will measure the circumference around the baby's stomach and head. May tumawag po ata ulit kay Lumbera. Mag-rejoin lang daw po si Lumbera. So yun po, I'm back. Sorry po, hindi na po mauulit. Um, ulitin ko po, if the doctor is concerned about the patient's belly, he or she will order an ultrasound to check on the baby po for abnormalities and other irregularities po. The ultrasound will measure the circumference around the baby's stomach and head as well as the length of the legs to see if there may be a problem. Uh, Doon po makikita kung sakaling magkakaproblema sa panganganak kung normal or CS po. Uh, meaning po ng CS ay cesarean po. The doctor will also likely check for gestational diabetes with a glucose tolerance test if they haven't already had one. Um, sa size pa din po ito yung uterus. Uh, Pregnant bellies are measured in centimeters, usually starting around 20 weeks. So 20 weeks, mga sa isang buwan po ay may four months. So mga five, five months pregnant na po ito. And there's a simple formula for calculating how large the tummy should be at any given point in the pregnancy. Dito naman po ay start with the number of weeks you're pregnant, then add two to that number and also subtract two from that number, which will give the range that the belly should be within. For example, if 30 weeks pregnant, the belly should be between 28 and 32 centimeters. If 25 weeks along, the belly should measure between 23 and 27 centimeters. So, ito naman po ay how to Andrea, diagnose. Shopee. Currently, most women are diagnosed with pregnancy after a missed menstrual cycle and a positive urine or serum HCG. So, kalimitan naman po sa mga nag-report ko. Hindi nila alam. Kalimitan po sa mga nagbubuntis ay hindi nila alam kung bagay magtataka na lang sila bakit may mga pagbabago sa katawan nila. Pero ang most common na parang nagiging pagkakaalam nila na sila ay buntis ay nagsusoka. The pregnancy is diagnosed as viable with serial exams and normal pregnancy development. A normal dating ultrasound or positive fetal heart tones by Doppler. The Diagnosis of pregnancy requires a multi-faced approach using three main diagnostic tools, history and physical examination, hormonal assays, and ultrasound. The classic presentation of pregnancy is a woman with menses of regular frequency who represent amenorrhea, nausea, vomiting, yung sinasabi ko po kanina, general generalized malaise and breast tenderness. Um, upon physical examination, one may find an enlarged uterus on 
by manual exam, breast changes, and softening and enlargement of the cervix. Hagar sign observed at approximately six weeks. The Chadwick sign is a bluish discoloration of the cervix from venous congestion and can be observed by eight to 10 weeks. A gravid uterus may be palpable, palpable low in the abdomen if the pregnancy has progressed far enough, usually by 12 weeks. Currently, through the use of chemical assays and US or ultrasound, Physicians are capable of making the diagnosis of pregnancy before many of the physical signs and symptoms are evident. Um, so ito po yung mga signs naman po ng paglilabor or yung malapit na mga anak. Early signs of labor. Giving birth will be different for every woman kasi hindi naman po pare-parehong size ng mga pregnant din meron pong may malalaki pong babae may maliit pong babae kumbaga po ay hindi po lahat ng case ay pare-pareho but the main signs that women are starting labor will most likely be strong regular contractions and a show during pregnancy a plug of mucus sits in the cervix a show is when that plug of mucus comes away indicating that the service is starting to open. Um, other signs of going into labor can include water breaking or yung sinasabi yung pumutok na daw yung panubigan, backache or an upset stomach, cramping or tightening similar to period pain, a feeling of pressure as the baby's head moves into the pelvis, and an urge to go to the toilet caused by your baby's head pressing in your bowel. Um, so, ito naman po yung stages of labor. The first stage is when the contractions increase, the cervix begins to open up or dilate. This is usually the longest stage. So, ito yung pinakamahirap daw ata na stage. The second stage of laboring is when the cervix is fully open. This is the part of labor where women help their baby move through. Move through the vagina by pushing with their contractions. And the third stage is after the birth of the baby when the womb contracts and causes the placenta to come out through the vagina. So, ayun po. Hello po, um, this is Julia Palas po and ako pong magpe-present ng, ng next part ng aming report and it's all about fake pregnancy po. So ano ba yung fake pregnancy? Yung fake pregnancy is yung pagpapanggap ng isang babae na mayroon siyang dinadarang anak. So kung kanina, pinag-uusapan natin is yung pregnancy na natural lang na nangyayari. Ito naman is yung um, parang kunwari lang. So faking a pregnancy a pregnancy has become a trend on social media. So, um, alam ko hindi na kayo bago na kapag, di ba, sa YouTube, sobrang daming vloggers, mga couple vloggers na um, nagpa-prank, pwedeng pinaprank yung viewers or pinaprank yung partner na, may, na buntis na sila. And falsifying pregnancy can have legal ramifications when it is used to obtain a benefit or endure or defraud another. So, yung pagpapanggap mo na buntis ka, kung mayroon kang na-earn na, kunyari, pera, kung mayroon kang na-earn na ganon, or may nasaktan ka, um, pwede kang kasuhan. Next slide po. So, ito, mayroon tayong process on how to fake a pregnancy. So, hindi ko kayo ina-encourage na mag-fake kayo ng pregnancy, pero ito lang yung mga commonly na mga steps na ginagawa ng mga babae kung gusto nilang i-fake na pregnant sila. So, number one ay showing early signs of pregnancy. So, ano yung mga early signs of pregnancy? Unang-una is yung uh, missing your period. Complain about missing your period several days before you plan to tell them you're pregnant. So, syempre, ayun naman yung pinaka-common na, yun yung pinaka-common na symptoms 
na tinitignan ng mga tao kung buntis ka ba o hindi. Number two is pretend to have morning sickness by faking nausea and vomiting. Number three, visit the restroom often to pretend you're, you're, you're urinating frequently. Four, act like your breasts are swollen and tender. So, yung, di ba sa breast, kapag mayroon ng isang babae, yung breast niya swollen din. So, ganun din kapag, kapag buntis. And then, number five, pretend to feel tired. Pretend to feel tired all the time. Six, fake being emotional and VP to mimic mood swings. So, ang mga buntis, uh, ano sila, may mood swings sila. So, minsan, masaya sila, mamaya, galit na, ganon. So, ayun. Number seven is pretend to cave weird food combination. So, ayun, mayroon, mayroon tayong tinatawag na mga pinaglilihihan. So, ayun yun, mayroon din cravings. Next slide po. Yan, how to fake a pregnancy step two, getting a false positive. So, syempre kapag pakiramdam mo, buntis ka, mayroon kayong gagawin pregnancy test. So, paano mo siya, uh, paano ka makakapagpakita ng, po, ng positive na pregnancy test? Number one, I buy a fake pregnancy test for the easiest option. So, mayroon tayo mga, mayroon tayo mga nabibili na pregnancy, pregnancy test na Mayroong positive na, na binebenta ng mga, mayroon kasing mga uh, pregnant women na binebenta nila yung, yung pregnancy test nila. Number two is dip a pregnancy test into a cup of Coke or Pepsi. Number three, draw a line to create positive results. So yung draw line, yung kapag bumili ka ng normal na positive na, na pregnancy test, di ba, kapag negative, one line, kapag positive, two line. So pwede mo siyang lagyan ng isa pang line. Number four, take the test at least an hour before presenting so your urine so your urine evaporates. Number five is get a pregnant friend to give you a urine sample. So, ayan po. Next slide. Yan. So, habang naghahanap ako ng mga, mga kung ano-ano tungkol sa fake pregnancy, meron akong nahanap na link which is fakeababy.com. So, dito sa fakeababy.com, uh, um, um, minamarket nila yung website nila as prank lang. So, siguro kung, siguro ang ang gusto nila is, kunyari, gagawa kayo ng content, bili kayo sa kanila ng mga products na magpo-prove na buntis ka talaga. Kaso, merong mga instances na yung mga girls um, ginag, ginagamit talaga nila yung mga products dito ng matagalan para mapaniwala yung mga boyfriends nila na buntis sila. So, ano mga offers sa fakeababy.com? Uh, meron silang ultrasound videos, positive pregnancy tests, doctored hospital records, prescriptions, and etc. Um, kapag in-order mo sila, kapag in-order niyo yung mga, yung mga products, kapag dumating sila sa inyo, meron silang mga nakalagay na for entertainment purposes only. So, meron, akong, meron kaming video na pre-repair and 2 minutes lang siya. So, panoodin mo na natin. Next slide. Rinig po ba? Hindi po sa akin. Walang sound. Wait lang po. Pinig na po ba yung anina? Lapak. Lapak? Lapak. 
It's advertised as a great gag gift, but plenty of people are using this to pull the wool over their boyfriend's eyes. Fakeababy.com is a website that has everything you need to fool someone into thinking you're pregnant. But as Lisa Guerrero reports, not everyone is laughing. According to these documents, you're pregnant. Oh my gosh. I sure look pregnant. I've got this baby bump. I've even got these sonograms. But looks sure can be deceiving. I'm not really pregnant at all. This belly, fake. These sonograms, fake. These documents, fake, fake, fake. And they all come from one place, a website called fakeababy.com. I faked my baby. I faked a pregnancy. This young woman named Danielle says her boyfriend was breaking up with her. So she used fake a baby to save the relationship by convincing her boyfriend that she was pregnant. Holy cow, really? Yes. yes. Fake a baby even sells ultrasound videos, positive pregnancy tests, and doctored hospital records. There was a document. A document from a local hospital stating she was pregnant. Fake a baby's sonograms and paperwork all say for entertainment purposes only. But Danielle showed us how easy it was to cut off the label before she showed them to her boyfriend, Mark. You knew in your heart this was wrong. I didn't want to lose him. This guy says he fell for it, too. I was very convinced that she was pregnant. Eric Neville of State College, Pennsylvania, says his girlfriend used a sonogram and documents like this to con him into proposing. He says he spent thousands of dollars leasing a new house big enough for the three of them. She played me like a fiddle. But her lie finally came crashing down when Eric says he discovered an email from fakeababy.com on his girlfriend's computer. Dr. Rebecca Brightman, an OBGYN in Manhattan, says to the untrained eye, those ultrasounds and documents look very convincing. I don't think it's funny. It's really scary. The more I delved into this myself, the more I realized how this is really a setup for abuse. And check this out. While it's not illegal, we found dozens of ads on Craigslist. Pregnant women offering to sell their positive pregnancy tests. What is this? Oh, I just basically, as you call me, I peed in a bottle, ran to the store. Okay, it, yeah. so you're the pregnant I'm one. I'm pregnant. This woman posted this ad on Craigslist. Whether you are using it for your own amusement or to blackmail the CEO of wherever, who you are having an affair with, I don't care at all. My name is actually Lisa Guerrero, oh, and hey. I'm with Inside Edition. You know, I was looking at you, so, me, you know what? Some people would say it's unethical. Yes, it is. I 100% agree, agree with right? you. Yes, I 100% agree with it. Back to Danielle and Mark. They're trying to work things out. They're back together, and Danielle says a lot wiser. If you're thinking about faking a pregnancy, don't do it. Ever. Ever, ever, ever. We tried a number of times to get a comment from fakeababy.com, but they never responded. Oh, I didn't it's advertised as a great gag gift, but plenty of people are using this to pull the wool over their boyfriend. So ayun po yung fakeababy.com. Um sinearch ko siya po sa internet and gumagana pa din po yung website. So para po sa akin parang parang um uh, dapat po siyang ipasara. Hindi ko alam sa inyo pero para sa akin parang dapat po siyang ipasara dahil ano niyo po yung parang serious na po yung mga nangyayari dahil din sa mga documents na nakukuha doon. So ayun po. So ayan, ang next part po ay reason for faking pregnancy. Um, ayun nga, dun sa video, diga, nakita nyo naman na unang-una, ang reason ng babae ay para ma-avoid yung breakup. So, ayan, nandito siya, nakalista siya sa to avoid breakups. So, ang una ay to get back together with an ex. So, meron kasing mga girls na parang, ay, hindi ko kayo nang wala yung boyfriend ko. So, kailangan kong humanap ng reason para magbalikan kami, ganyan. So, sasabi nila na buntis sila. Next is to avoid breakups to get the boyfriend to propose for marriage. 
for money. So, bakit for money? Kasi, mayroong mga pregnant women na um, um, pwedeng makakuha sila ng sustento kapag nabuntis sila or kapag nagpretend sila na namatay yung baby, mayroong mga yung mga donations, ganun. For welfare benefits, for attention or entertainment. So, dito pumapasok yung mga YouTube vloggers na nakakuha sila ng attention, ganyan, at saka ng entertainment. And then, yung last, I fake it till they make it. Yun ay for mga couples na hanggang ngayon, kunyari, hanggang ngayon, di pa sila nagkakaanak. Tapos, parang uh, nababother na yung boyfriend, ganyan, yung asawa. So, pwede mag, magpa-fake yung girl na, na buntis, siya, buntis na siya hanggang sa mabuntis na siya ng tunay. So, next slide po. Ayan. So, the size. Ayan. So, ang ibig sabihin niyan ay false pregnancy. So, kung kanina yung dinidiscuss ko ay fake pregnancy, ito naman false pregnancy. So, ang kaibahan nito, ah, uh, Itong false pregnancy or phantom pregnancy ay sakit siya. So, it is a condition in which the patient has all signs and symptoms of pregnancy except for the confirmation of the presence of AP2. So, um, may, yung babae nakaka-experience siya ng lahat ng symptoms ng, ng pregnancy kahit sa totoo, wala naman siyang uh, baby. So, ano yung mga, mga symptoms ng pregnancy? Unang-una ay weight gain. Uh, morning sickness, growing belly, irritability, urinary frequency, breast changes, ganun. Um, na-experience niya yung lahat. Na-experience lahat din ng body niya kahit hindi naman talaga siya buntis. Uh, this condition experience all the typical symptoms of pregnancy. Most common in women ages 29 to 39 years old. And most common cause is that the woman has such intense desire to be pregnant. So, mayroon kasing mga, mga babae na gustong-gusto na nilang magkaanak, pero hindi sila magkaanak. Tapos, ayan, nagkakaroon sila ng sakit na napapaniwala nila yung sarili nila na buntis na nga sila. So, dati mayroon akong nabasa, super tagal na siya, part siya ng history ng isang country. And yung parang queen doon, uh, Akala niya, ilang beses na siyang nabuntis, tapos namamatay yung baby. Tapos one time, akala niya talaga buntis na siya, lumalaki yung chan niya, ganun. Pero, ayun, wala pala siyang anak. So, false pregnancy siya. Ang other causes ng false pregnancy ay multiple miscarriages. Ayun nga, yung sinabi ko kanina. Loss of a baby or child, infertility, and mental breakdown. Um, ayun, so... Since sakit nga siya, ano yung um, possible method kung paano maaalis yung pseudosciences? So, one of the successful methods to end it is to show woman evidence of the absence of a fetus through an, through an ultrasound. So, para, para alam yun, kasi sa utak siya. So, para, ma, para ma, masabi mo dun sa, na, dun sa babae na wala naman talaga siyang anak, kailangan natin silang bigyan ng proof and yung pinaka-common is yung ultrasound. Kasi nga, hindi kapag ultrasound, doon mo makikita yung baby or yung heartbeat niya, ganyan. So, ayun. Next slide po. Next, yan. How to detect fake pregnancy? So, balik tayo sa fake pregnancy. Ha, yung fake pregnancy at false pregnancy, magkaiba sila. So, ito, fake pregnancy. Number one, ay take more pregnancy test with your supervision. So, ikaw, kung lalaki ka, tapos gusto mong malaman kung nagkukunwari lang ba yung, yung partner mo, nabuntis siya o hindi, ah, uh, ang pinaka ang pinaka simpleng gawin ay mag pregnancy test kayo nakasama ka kasi syempre hindi na naman hindi niya yun matatamper kung nandun ka habang tinetake niya yung pregnancy test next i visit the doctor together syempre sa doctor professional uh, malalaman niyo kung buntis talaga siya or hindi tapos ayun through ultrasound and be smart and observant hindi ko naman sinasabi na lahat ng kunyari ako nagsabi ako sa boyfriend ko na buntis ako hindi naman palaging Uh, joke lang, hindi naman palaging fake lang. So, ayun, siguro ay be smart and observant. Tapos, wag pa din kayong mawawala ng trust dun sa inyong partner na iisipin nyo, ay, nagpe-fake ka lang, ganyan. So, next slide pa. Yan, meron akong nakita ng mga four red flags that pregnancy is a trap. 
So, ayun nga, kagaya ng sinasabi ko kanina, hindi naman lahat ng pregnancy ay, ay, ay fake. So, each red flag is intended to get your attention and help you post to consider possibilities. So, ang una po ay, ang una po ay the pregnancy pulled you from the brink. So, the pregnancy may be a preemptive move to cut off your chance of getting away. So, ayan nga yung mga break up, yung gusto ko, yung para lang hindi ko umalis, magpapanggap yung girl na buntis siya. Number two, you've made it clear you don't want kids. The primary objective is motherhood. So, mayroong mga couple na hindi pa sila nagkakasundo kung pareho nila gusto magkaanak. Kasi, syempre, mayroon naman ding mga tao na ayaw magkaanak tapos yung iba gustong gusto. So, minsan kapag yung lalaki ayaw niya, magpapanggap yung babae na buntis na siya. In that way, parang wala nang wala nang lulusutan yung lalaki na sasabihin na, ay, ayaw ko mag-anak. Kasi meron na. Number three is, she has something to gain from being the mother of your child. Um, yung mga gains na yun ay, fulfill her dream to be a mom, seal the deal on your relationship, yun yung mga kasal. Number three, get you to support her th or through child support, ayun yung mga pera, qualify a welfare benefit sa government, and secure immig immigration status. Lastly, I she has convenient conveniently timed miscarriage. So, kapag kapag a mis a miscarriage may be a cover story for a pregnancy that never was. So kung yare um nasabi sa yung a uh, girlfriend or asawa mo na buntis siya, tapos hindi nyo pa totally totally na ko confirm bigla na lang siyang na miscarriage. Baka nagpe-fake siya. Pero not all the time. Siyempre, kailangan naman natin maging open na meron talagang mga babae na lalaliklaga ng anak. So, ayun po. Next slide. Yan. How to detect pregnancy at home. So, ito yung mga ginagawa sa bahay. Number one, siyempre, pregnancy test. Alam ko naman na common na tayong lahat sa pregnancy test. And this test can be done on either urine or blood. This test can find the presence of human chorionic gono HCG. This 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 test can find HCG and um, levels of HCG hormone approximately approximately double every two days during the first sixty days of pregnancy. At most home pregnancy tests are ninety seven to ninety nine percent accurate. So, mayroon ibat ibang um, itsura ng pregnancy test. Uh, merong, merong, ayan, katulad nyo nga sa picture, merong one line at double line. Tapos yung iba naman, nakasulat siya na pregnant, ganon. Tapos, um, kailan, kailan tayo dapat magte-take ng pregnancy test? So, yung pag-take ng pregnancy test ay, ay two weeks after set, two weeks after yung intercourse kasi nga kailangan natin kailangan ng body ng HCG level na na mag, ma, na ma, na madedetect ng pregnancy test and um uh, ang pinaka accurate time naman na magtake ka ng pregnancy test is week after you missed your period ayan so next slide po ayan mayroong mga Ang second natin ay DIY pregnancy test. Mayroon mga do-it-yourself na mga pregnancy test na uh, kapag sinurch nyo siya sa internet, ano siya, very common siya, ganyan. So, ang una ay bleach pregnancy test. Ang bleach pregnancy test ay, ay give the most accurate and quicker result. So, ayun yung sabi. So, katulad dyan sa picture, um, Kapag positive, meron siyang foam or feed na lalabas dun sa mixture ng, ng urine and bleach. Tapos kapag negative naman, ay, ayan, ganyan lang siya. So, so, ang next ay sugar pregnancy test. Sa sugar pregnancy test, pareho lang siya. Pareho lang siya ng bleaching. Ang, ang, ang i-mimix mo lang with the urine ay yung sugar. And kapag negative siya, uh, sugar dissolves in urine. And kapag positive naman, ay sugar forms clumps in urine. So itong mga do-it-yourself na pregnancy test, hindi sila 
um, hindi sila scientifically reliable kasi although kapag nung nagbabasa ako about dyan, marami ng generations yung gumamit ng DIY pregnancy test pero wala siyang um, conclusive proof or scientific evidence that na, na gumagana talaga sila. So, ayun. Pero pwede mo siyang itry like for fun, ganyan. Pero hindi siya recommended na dyan kayo magbe-base kung buntis talaga or hindi. So, next slide po. Ay, okay na po. Next reporter na po. Hello po. I'm Aubrey Halera po and ako na po mag-report sa part na ito. How to calculate expected birth delivery? Meron po tayong uh, dalawang methods. So, according to the John Hopkins Medicine, a typical pregnancy lasts on average 280 days or 40 weeks, starting with the first day of the last normal menstrual period as day one. Tapos, for our method one, an estimated due date can be calculated by the following steps. The first step is to determine the first day of your last menstrual period. The second step is to count back three calendar months from that date. And the third step is to add one year and seven days to that day. So example, yung last menstrual period ni Taylor ay nagsimula noong September 9, 2021. So kapag nag-count back ka ng three calendar months, it would be uh, on June 9, 2021. So, kapag nag-add ka ng 1 year and 7 days, ang magiging total noon ay June 16, 2021. So, yung June 16, 2021, yun yung magiging estimated due date. Then, second slide po. Yan. Ito naman po yung another method. Parang ito ay... Uh, pwedeng i-incorporate i-incorporate mo yung method 1 sa pangalawang method na to. So for the first step is to locate the first day of your menstrual period. Dun sa table na yon, yung kulay black, yun yung titingnan mo doon na as your first day of menstrual period. Tapos yung step 2, titingnan mo yung date na directly below dun sa kulay black. Yun yung magiging estimated date of delivery mo. So example, Yung first day nung menstrual period ni Jenny ay nung last uh, June 1. So kapag tiningnan mo yung date below, yung magiging estimated date of delivery niya is either on March 8 or April 8. Yan pa. Next slide. Yan. So um, ito po yung sunod na topic which is pregnancy resulting from rape. Next slide. Dito. So, ano muna tayo, definition of terms. For rape, rape is from the Latin word rapere. It is a violent act that inflicts unspeakable trauma upon the person assaulted. Ang rape-related pregnancy naman, it is a pregnancy that a rape victim uh, attributed to rape. Then, ang reproductive coercion, uh, it is a form of sexual violence that involves exerting power and control over reproduction through interference with contraception use and pregnancy measure. Next slide po. Thank you. So yan, uh, since ano kasi, since uh, the beginning, parang marami ng false belief na meron sa pregnancy na kumbaga, impossibly daw na mag result yung pregnancy from rape. So ito yung ano, para bang some of the beliefs lang about whether rape can result in pregnancy. The first one is Galen. He is an ancient Greek physician and he believed that a woman must experience pleasure to release seed and become pregnant and could not derive such pleasure from non-consensual sex. Galen's thinking influenced understanding from medieval England to colonial America. The next one is Aristotle. So, Familiar na naman tayo sa kanya. He is an ancient Greek philosopher who also believed that female pleasure played a central role in conception. Female reproduction was in many ways viewed through the lens of male reproductive processes, imagining that female organs function as inverted versions of male organs and hence, kailangan pa daw ng orgasm para magkaroon 
at mangyari yung conception. Then the third one is in 18th century Europe, para meron sa kanilang belief na a man could use a woman's pregnancy as a legal defense to prove that he could not have raped her since her pregnancy was thought to mean that she had in fact enjoyed the sex and therefore consented to it. The next one would be Karin Sanders is a medieval literary scholar. He acknowledged a difficulty in determining how widely held was the belief that pregnancy implies consent, but concluded that it influenced at least some justices. Then Samuel Four, in the 1814 British, British legal text, Elements of Medical Jurisprudence, he claimed that conception probably could not occur without a woman's enjoyment, so that an absolute rape was unlikely to lead to pregnancy. Then Fred Mecklenburg, see Fred Mecklenburg, he is ano, a physician and anti-abortion activist. He argued that pregnancy from rape is extremely rare, adding that a woman exposed to the trauma of rape will not ovulate even if she is scheduled to kasi mayroon daw parang mga factors na nakaka-effect like stress yung mga ganun para uh, hindi siya mag-conceive ng baby. Then in recent decades, uh, some anti-abortion organizations and politicians, si Todd Akin, he opposes legal abortion in cases of rape that have advanced claims that pregnancy very rarely arises from rape and that the practical relevance of such exception to abortion law is therefore limited or non-existent. Next slide po. Thank you. So, ito naman po, statistics tayo of pregnancy resulting from rape. So, in the U.S., one out of six women have been the victim of rape or attempted rape. And that is using a rather tight definition that does not include many kinds of assault victims uh, had experienced. In a widely cited 1996 study from the American Journal of Obstetrics and Gynecology sampled uh, over 4,000 women and found that the rape-related pregnancy rate was 5%. That is, after being raped once, a woman had 5% chance of pregnancy. That number includes rapes in which condoms were used. Kumbaga, uh, sobrang imagine yon kahit na gumamit yung uh, rapist ng condom dun sa ginawa niyang assault dun sa biktima. Uh, meron pa rin na 5% chance of pregnancy. So, ito naman in the Philippines. A Filipino woman or girl is raped every 72 minutes. In 2014, police records, 7,409 women reported that they had been raped. So, imagine what, lalo na ngayon, halos uh, mahigit isang taon na tayong nakalockdown dito sa Pilipinas. So, mas prominent na yung mga nangyayaring cases and unreported cases ng uh, sexual violence sa kababaihan. Next slide po. Yan. So, women's average risk of pregnancy after unprotected sex. In a 1998 study in contraception, quantified a woman's average risk of pregnancy after unprotected sex such as Three day, kapag three days prior to ovulation, meron 15% chance of pregnancy. Kapag one to two days prior to ovulation, meron 30% chance of pregnancy. Then kapag within 24 hours of ovulation, meron 12% chance of pregnancy. Then kapag one to two days after ovulation, don around 0% naman of pregnancy. Next po. Yan, since pinag-uusapan na rin natin ang um, pregnancy, uh, include na rin natin yung usapin sa abortion. So, what is abortion? Abortion is when a pregnancy is ended so that it doesn't result in the birth of a child. Sometimes it is also called termination of pregnancy. Next slide po. Yan. So, meron po tayong iba't ibang types of abortion. The first one is the medical abortion. Yung medical abortion ay merong two types pa. The first one is the abortion pill, which is also known as early medical abortion, which can be done up to 10 weeks. 
it involves taking medication to cause an early miscarriage wherein women may experience cramping, pain, and heavy bleeding. There is no surgery or anesthetic needed. Then, abortion pill from 10 weeks up to 24 weeks. It involves taking medication to cause the womb to contract and push out the pregnancy. There are two visits to the clinic needed. Sometimes an overnight stay is needed on the second visit. The second type of abortion is the surgical abortion. Surgical abortion involves a quick minor operation. There are also two types of surgical abortion. The first one is the vacuum aspiration, which can be done up to 15 weeks. It removes the pregnancy by gentle suction. Then up to 14 weeks of pregnancy, this can be done with local anesthetic. The quicker recovery time for this option means that they can leave the clinic unattended and drive sooner. Kapag naman up to 15 weeks, it can be done with sedation, which makes them relaxed and sleepy. You also only need one visit to the clinic, then you can go home the same day. Then the next type is the latation and evacuation, which can be done between 15 and 24 weeks. It is carried out with general anesthetic. The pregnancy is removed using narrow forceps passed through the neck of the womb and some gentle suction. There is also one visit to the clinic, then you can go home also the same day. The third type of abortion is natural abortion. It is spontaneous. Uh, it can result from gross malformations, maternal diseases, uterine abnormality, and it can also be caused by uh, hormones. Then the next one is traumatic. It follow. It can happen by following a fall or road traffic accident. Yung parang sa mga ano, sa Wattpad or telenovela, yung pag natulak, nahulog, uh, makukunan, ganon. Then, in this abortion, the first one is therapeutic abortion. It is done in good faith to save the life of the woman as the continuation of the pregnancy will result in the death of the woman. Then, the next one is criminal abortion. It is done other than to save the life of a woman. Yan. Next slide po. Yan. Since pinag-uusapan na rin natin yung abortion, we are all aware naman na ang abortion is hindi legal dito sa Pilipinas. So, dun nga, di ba, sa, uh, under the Revised Penal Code of the Philippines, dun sa Article 256-259, yan, nandiyan yung intentional abortion, unintentional abortion, abortion practiced by the woman, herself or by her parents, abortion practice by a physician or midwife, and dispensing of abortives. Uh, yon. Actually, hindi na ako masyado mag-dive dito ng, deep, ng mas malalim kasi alam ko naman na, pa, na fresh pa to sa ating memory since kakatake lang natin ng no, uh, criminal law. Too. Yan. Thank you po. Next slide. Yan. Ito naman. Bibigyan natin ka, magbibigay kami sa inyo ng reasons why we need to uh, decriminalize abortion. In 2012 alone, 600,000 Filipino women induce abortion. Based on, the, on these statistics, the number of induced abortions increases proportionately with the increasing Philippine population. So habang dumadami yung uh, population sa Pilipinas, mas dumadami pa rin yung mga taong nag induce ng abortion. So the Philippines must decriminalize abortion now. Otherwise, allowing outmoded colonial penal abortion laws in the Philippines makes us all complacent to the high number of women who die each day from unsafe abortion complications. The first reason is to save women's lives and prevent disability from unsafe abortion complications. The second one is to reduce mater maternal deaths related to unintended or unwanted pregnancies and unsafe abortions during humanitarian crisis, including the COVID-19 pandemic. The third one is to respect the woman's personal decision. Fourth one is to repeal discriminatory laws against women and eliminate stigma, discrimination, and imposition of oppressive religious beliefs against women who induce abortions. Fifth is to provide incest and rape survivors and sexually exploited trafficked women the opportunity to end unwanted pregnancies through safe abortion procedures. 
and the last was to save the lives of adolescent girls, women with women with disabilities, and other persons at risk. We began ko kayo ng ano. There have been kasi cases of women who were raped, became pregnant as a result of the rape, and then they they died due to complications from their unsafe abortion. Uh, in 2012, a 19 year old woman who was raped by her stepfather became pregnant as a result of rape. And she was forced to induce an abortion under unsafe conditions, wherein sadly she died from complications. Uh, the sad thing is, hindi kasi to isolated case. Who knows na, hindi lang nag -iisa yung 19-year-old woman na yun who was raped by someone she trusted. Then out of, uh, out of that uh, disappointment she felt, uh, she was forced to induce an abortion which resulted to uh, the loss of her life, diba? Then, with abortion decriminalized, women's access to safe abortion and post-abortion care will not be impeded, thus averting maternal deaths and disability from unsafe abortion complications. Next slide po. Yan. So, ito naman is the imaging of pregnancy using medical scans. So, diba parang laging sa mga medical drama, parang napapanood ko lagi kapag may buntis, Tapos sinabihan siya na, uh, ma'am, kailangan po kayong i-x-ray, ganyan. Parang lagi na isip ang tanong agad, is it safe for my baby? Ganon. So dito, i-discuss natin kung safe ba yung mga pagkuhan ng imaging sa pregnancy using medical scans. So first, what is radiation muna? According to the Merriam Webster Dictionary, radiation is the energy radiated in the forms of waves or particles. So, for the definition of terms, Background radiation is always present in our environment. Uh, the sources of background radiation in our environment are cosmic rays from the universe, naturally occurring radioactive substances in the food and water we eat and drink, the air we breathe, in the ground, in building materials, and so on. Tapos yung amount ng background radiation kasi nagbabary sa different parts of the world dahil iba't iba kasi yung level of radioactivity na meron sa soil, sa latitude, sa height. Parang basta, it's everywhere. Yan. The next one po ay x-rays. X-rays have more energy than visible light and can therefore penetrate much deeper into and through objects. An x-ray beam is absorbed differently by different structures in the body. Kumbaga, yung a dense structure, bow, a dense structure such as bone, nag absorb siya ng high percentage of the x-ray beam. Tapos yung mga low-density structures naman, such as yung mga soft tissue, it will absorb small amount lang. Tapos yung mga metal objects sa body, usually kapag nakita siya, it will appear as white. Then yung air sa lungs will be black because it also absorbs so little radiation. So x-rays are electrically generated and are only present when the x-ray machine is switched on, just like a light bulb. Once the x-ray machine is switched off, there is no residual radiation coming from the x-ray machine. Having an examination using ionizing radiation does not make people radioactive. Next slide po. Thank you. Yeah. Nuclear medicine. It is a medical specialty that diagnoses and monitors disease by giving patients small amounts of radioactive material in the form of a radio pharmaceutical. A radio pharmaceutical is a combination of a radioactive part and a pharmaceutical or drug part. You know, after a nuclear medicine test, where a patient will uh, either swallow, breathe in, or receive an injection of a radio pharmaceutical, they will be slightly radioactive for a short time. This small amount of radiation will be picked up by a special camera called a gamma camera. Yan, next slide po. Yan, ito yung mga, dito sa uh, table na to, makikita niyo yung mga tests or procedures na associated with radiation. Yan, no. siya ay naka-arrange siya sa ano, dun sa ano, typical, yun nga, table 2, typical fetal doses and risks of childhood cancer for common radiology tests and procedure. Doon sa bali yan ay naka-arrange mula sa pinaka hindi risky to pinaka risky. Ganon. Next slide po. Yan. Ganon din po ito. May discuss ko pa yan. 
Next slide po. Yan. So, ito. What are the risks ba? Risks of having diagnostic imaging during pregnancy for the mother. Uh, a pregnant woman is no more sensitive to radiation than a woman who is not pregnant. The risk associated with a diagnostic imaging procedure to a pregnant woman will be the same for any woman of the same age who is not pregnant. But there are two main types of risk. When, every, when anyone, including a pregnant woman, is exposed to ioning radiation, the first one is what we call the short-term risk. It's uh, yung damage uh, included then ay pwedeng burns to the skin, hair loss on areas of the body that have been exposed to, the, to a very large dose of x-rays. Uh, your short-term damage is usually the result of a very long and complex CT or interventional fluoroscopic procedures that are carried out on seriously ill patients. There is a substantial radiation dose threshold that must be exceeded before short-term damage occurs. It does not only uh, it does not normally occur in diagnostic imaging. Then ito naman yung long-term risk. risk. There is a very small increase in the possibility of cancer or genetic damage being caused as a result of medical ionizing radiation. The amount of risk associated with ionizing radiation can be a difficult concept to imagine because it is so small. Risk is expressed as chances per million, much the same way as you think would as you would think about the chance of winning the first prize in a lottery. Yung ganon. Ganon ka uh, liit yung possibility ba? So, next slide po. Yan. So, ano naman yung risk for the fetus of the mother having diagnostic imaging during pregnancies? Uh, it is very important to realize that almost all imaging tests exposes the fetus to such low levels of radiation that they are not a cause for concern. However, it is a good practice if possible to avoid those tests and procedures that directly expose the uterus or add the mental radiation of a woman if a woman is pregnant. As with all the medical imaging, the risk to mother and the fetus should be outweighed by the benefit of the test or procedure. Uh, note lang, Hannah, yung content dito, it does not uh, apply to radiation therapy for cancer kasi yung radiation na used for cancer treatment it involves radiation doses that are thousands of times higher na than those delivered sa mga diagnostic tests na katulad ng pinakita namin doon sa table kanina. So in general terms, the risk to the unborn fetus from ionizing radiation used uh, for medical diagnosis is dependent on the first one is the part of the mother's pregnancy. I, the part of the mother's body exposed to the radiation B is the, the stage of pregnancy, and C is the radiation dose received. So, if you are pregnant, then you are scheduled to have any kind of medical imaging. Uh, it is good and uh, it is better, I mean, to tell your doctor and the uh, hospital where you are having the test. Uh, I mean, it is really naman understandable that most women are worried about whether this will affect their fetus. So, uh, don't be shy to discuss this with your doctor since they will be very happy to uh, to, pal to na magpaliwanag sa inyo ganon. Next next slide po. Yan. Dito, meron pa din tayong considered as short-term risk and long-term risk. For the short-term risk, Kasi di ba, kung pinag-uusapan natin dito ay ano, fetus. So because the fetus is rapidly growing and developing, short-term risks are different for fetus uh, or embryo as the fetus is known in the first eight weeks after conception kumpara dun sa isang bata or isang adult. Uh, dito sa short-term risk, they might they include uh, death, slowing of normal growth, of normal growth, and being intellectually or emotionally underdeveloped. Yung International Commission on Radiological Protection, nag-state na sila ng deterministic risk such as this would not be exposed to occur in an embryo or fetus that had been exposed to less than 100 milligray, milligray of radiation. This is a table to kanina. 
makikita natin doon na mayroong indication na of the expected dose of radiation to a fetus or embryo associated with various examination types. The fetal dose estimates provided apply only to the early stages of pregnancy when the fetus is small. Uh, it can be seen that even for the highest dose of examinations at the bottom of the table, uh, the expected dose to the fetus or embryo for a single examination is well below the 100 milligray threshold. So for the long-term risk, Merong mga theoretical risk for cancer sometime after birth and the risk of hereditary disease occurring in the descendants of someone who was exposed to radiation as a fetus. Um, the scientific information available about the effect of small amounts of radiation on the fertilized egg before it implants in the uterus is very limited. So, bale, approximately one in every 500 children develops cancer during childhood. For the examinations in the lowest dose range, doon sa kaninang table, uh, the estimated potential additional risk for the fetus is approximately 1 in 1 million. And for the highest dose examinations at the bottom of the table, the additional risk is to be, thought to be approximately 1 in 1,000 or 1 in 200. So, di ba, considered pa rin siya to be a very low risk. So if a higher dose examination is needed because the risk of not doing the test is very significant for the mother, then this is the, this is the most appropriate. If a woman has one of the higher dose tests before she knows she is pregnant, the increased risk to the fetus is still considered to be small. So this would not be a reason talaga on its own to consider pregnancy termination because of fears about cancer risk for the baby or the child. Next slide po. Yan. Ito yung sinasabi ko sa inyo. Yung ano, di ba, dun sa, nakagroup siya, dun sa mga examination type, then the, typic, the typical fetal dose in milligray, then the risk of childhood cancer per examination. So, di ba, yun sa group 1, makikita natin dun yung ultrasound and magnetic resonance imaging or MRI. So, wala tayong ilalagay, wala dong milligray na kailangan, zero yung dose. Then wala rin tayong risk. So, kaya usually talaga gamit na gamit yung ultrasound sa mga pag nagbubuntis, gano'n. Then sa group 1, yung pag in ray yung skull, yung chest, yung thoracic spine, or mammogram, or pwede rin CT scan ng head or, head or neck. Um, meron naman tayo dong risk of childhood cancer, uh, 1 in 1 million. So, very konti lang and ganun lang yun and so on and so on hanggang doon sa mga susunod na groups next slide po next slide po ulit yan so what are the benefits ba for the mother before referring a, preg a pregnant woman for an imaging test or procedure the woman's doctor will consult with her and make an assessment that the benefits outweigh any possible risk laging ang priority ay mas makalalamang yung benefits over studies. Ganon. Then what if a woman has had a test involving radiation and then finds out she is pregnant? If a woman undergoes a radiology or nuclear medicine procedure and then finds out that she is pregnant, it is important that the woman talks to her doctor about the theoretical risk. This will uh, avoid the needless worry or inappropriate consideration of pregnancy termination as a result of fears about the well-being of the fetus because of exposure to ionizing radiation. Uh, but it is entirely appropriate that the woman talks talaga to her referring doctor about any worries or concerns. So what should the woman of reproductive age consider if referred for a test involving ionizing radiation? This depends on the test, uh, on the kind of test that the woman has been referred to. In table 2, yung kanina, yung makikita nyo doon na yung mga tests have been grouped from the lowest to highest in terms of radiation dose that is given to the uterus. So when having any kind of nuclear medicine test or a radiology test, or procedure that involves exposing the abdomen or pelvic area to radiation, it is very important for a woman to know if she is pregnant talaga. So, if a woman is definitely not pregnant 
or in other words, not sexually active, then it is safe to proceed with the test. But if a woman is definitely pregnant, then she must tell her doctor and the practice or the hospital where she is having the procedure. The medical staff will assess the potential risk of not having the test and balance this against the potential risk to the fetus from the radiation. So, pwede silang from that, uh, from that, doon silang makakapag-decide kung uh, ipupush to ba nila yung radiation or they can wait until the baby is born or maghahanap sila ng other option or other test that does not involve radiation exposure para sa fetus. Next slide po. Yan. Naman, if a woman cannot be a cannot be certain that she is not pregnant because she is sexually active, but her period is not overdue and she has been referred for one of the lower dose procedures involving a dose of less than 10 mg to the uterus, then it is generally considered safe to proceed without having a pregnancy test. Naman, what if a woman's period is late? Then she should follow the recommendation for probably or definitely pregnant patients until she has a pregnancy test and it is negative. If a woman has been referred for one of the higher dose tests, it is more important to be sure she is not pregnant. Because a woman may be sure because she is not sexually active. It is also very unlikely a woman is pregnant if she's in the first days of the menstrual cycle. Uh, if a woman a man is sexually active in her reproductive years and in the last half of the menstrual cycle, it is best not to have a higher dose procedure without consultation between the radiology practice and the referring doctor. If the test is not a medical emergency, then it is advisable to wait and schedule the test or procedure after the period starts up from uh, after the period starts up to 10 days from the beginning of, men of menstrual bleeding. The chance of becoming pregnant during this time is uh, extremely low. Next slide po. Yan. So what do I need to consider by if I'm trying to become pregnant? So preconception radiation exposure of either parents' reproductive organs has not been shown to result in increased cancer or abnormalities of children. So if you are trying to become pregnant and you need to have a medical imaging test involving radiation, you need to consider the timing of this test in relation to your menstrual period. Yan, ko consider mo daw yung test, yung time na kukunin mo yung test sa iyong menstrual period. So ito naman, what if nagbe-breastfeed na yung woman? What if a woman is breastfeeding and needs to have a nuclear medicine procedure? So when a radiopharmaceutical is given as part of a nuclear medicine procedure, uh, it spreads throughout the body. Some organs will collect a higher concentration of the radiopharmaceutical than others, but it will be distributed throughout the body. Some radiopharmaceuticals can enter uh, the breast milk of nursing mothers and be consumed by infants. So usually, to avoid unnecessary exposure of an infant to the radiopharmaceuticals, Breastfeeding will have to be suspended for a short period of time after the nuclear medicine procedure. Yung length of the period will depend sa type and amount na uh, radiopharmaceutical na ginamit. So if yung breastfeeding at the time of the nuclear medicine procedure, yung woman ay kailangan ay inform niya yung staff before the procedure and seek advice from the specialist to ask kung kailan pwedeng mag-resume yung breastfeeding. So, yon. Women due to undergo therapy with radio, iodine may find it beneficial to stop breastfeeding two to three weeks before receiving therapy. Uh, this is because breast tissue that is producing milk will receive a higher dose of radiation than the breast tissue of a woman who is not breastfeeding. Again, specific advice needs to be uh, sought from the specialist. Lang po.
Hello po. Uh, this is Adi Perez Polet. And this time, uh, we will be discussing how to tell if a woman has been pregnant and delivered a baby. So earlier, we discussed yung symptoms and how to tell if a woman is pregnant. And for this topic, naman, we will be discussing uh, how to tell kung uh, naging pregnant na ba and napag-deliver ng uh, baby ang isang babae. So first one is vaginal stretching. During childbirth, there is a chance that the skin between the vagina and the anus will tear or must be cut. This is called an episiotomy and almost 50% of women mid childbirth are subject to it. So yung area between the vagina and the anus is also called the uh, perineum. And, and yeah, uh, of course, uh, after delivery, siyempre may, may bata na lalabas sa, ano, sa vagina ng babae. Uh, usually in ano, in regular cases. So normally, you can expect na there will be stretching uh, within the vagina. So in the uh, illustration, yun, nakita natin yung typical na itsura ng vagina before giving birth and then after birth. So magsistretch siya dahil nga nag-deliver siya ng, ng baby na malaki ang ulo, may katawan, and may limbs. And the next one is vaginal dryness. So after after the birth, <clears throat> it's also completely normal to experience vaginal dryness, which is linked to lower levels of estrogen in the body. So after mana, uh, during pregnancy, uh, mataas yung levels of estrogen. And then after pregnancy, dahil wala nang kailangang nourish na bata, bababa na yung levels of estrogen. And this will result to vaginal dryness. And when breastfeeding, women will have even less estrogen in the body, but it should all, but it should all balance out after the uh, pregnancy. And then next is vaginal soreness. Women will face soreness in the vagina and perineum, or yung yung area between the vagina and the anus, post-pregnancy or after. This is because the uterus is working hard to shrink back to a smaller size, and should be given some time to safely do this. So dahil nga uh, yung, uh, yung first na effect after being pregnant and delivering a baby is vagina stretching. So uh, after a few days, yung uh, body or yung vagina, uh, it will try to revert back into its uh, normal size. And yun, it should be given enough time and care para magawa na yun automatically. So expect bleeding up to several weeks afterwards. And this bleeding is referred to as lokia in the medical community. And if it doesn't let up within that time frame, then busy ka na kayo sa gynecologist. And then next one is changes in breast size and shape, which is more or less uh, ano, more, a more permanent na effect. Kasi kung yung mga nauna, which is yung stretching, uh, soreness, and dryness, uh, us what usually after mga anak lang and then pagkatapos ng ilang months ay babalik na sa dati. Ito naman more on, more on hindi na siya sobrang babalik sa exactly sa normal na itsura. So the size and shape of the breasts are bound to morph and morph more than once during pregnancy and childbirth. The body produces much higher levels of progesterone than estrogen as it is gearing for childbirth. So before pregnancy, you have, uh, meron kang yung typical na size and shape ng yung breast then during and pagkatapos habang nag uh, the breastfeed ka ay it will tend to it will tend to sag and then as shown in the illustration ay mag morph and change size and shape next one is dark and bigger nipples as early as the first trimester of pregnancy the tiny bumps around the areola or yung uh, area yung ang areola yun yung uh, parang darker part na naka yung naka surround sa nipple and it is also officially known as the Montgomery glands will become more prominent to prepare you for nursing so during pregnancy and you know, even after na i you will notice you will notice na yun mag the darken yung nipples in the surrounding area because of the hard working hormones the nipples will turn a few shades darker, especially among women with darker skin tone. 
within a few months after giving birth, the nipples tend to go back to their normal shape and color even during breastfeeding. The next one is changes in hand and feet size. Changes in the hormone levels cause, cause muscles and ligaments to become more relaxed in order to prepare for labor. This destabilizes the pelvis, resulting in inflammation in the lower extremities. When we say extremities, ito yung uh, limbs, so yung dalawang arms and dalawang uh, legs. Some women say that the sizes of their hands change as well. Even though they lost all their extra pregnancy weight, the fingers were bigger and they had to get their rings resized. So aside from uh, changes in the vagina and the breasts, I, some women also find ano, nagbabago din yung uh, hands and feet size nila <clears throat> as a result of the uh, fluctuation of hormones. Women can also develop carpal tunnel syndrome, which is a loss of sensation in the hands caused by pressure on the median nerve in the wrist. Then lastly is uh, bladder control. A weak bladder occurs when the muscles in the pelvic floor are damaged. And this happens during pregnancy and childbirth due to the hormonal changes and extra weight. So dahil pa rin ng, uh, in changes and overproduction of hormones. So nagtatend na usually yung bladder ay uh, napipilitan lang maihi ng, uh, more frequently. And it, this occurs even after mga nak. And this may also happen long after having given birth. This condition is also referred to as stress urinary incontinence or SUI, and it could uh, cause sudden loss of urine from simple things like laughing or sneezing. And then uh, next reporter for this topic. So good afternoon. Um, nandiyan pa ba kayo lahat? Um, next po ay how to investigate complaints of pregnancy due to rape or complaints from a pregnant woman while you are the examining op officer in a hospital or medical agency. So ito yung mga ginagawa naman ng isang examining officer. Immediate post-rape protocols call for medical professionals to assess the likelihood that a victim will become pregnant in their assessment of their physical damage done to the woman. Um, this protocol for gaining a history of the use of contraceptives as a women's use of birth control pills or other contraceptives before a rape affect her chance of becoming pregnant. Um, treatment protocols also call for clinicians to provide access to emergency contraception and counseling on abortion in countries where it is legal. Pero sa, sa Pilipinas, hindi po legal ang abortion. High-dose estrogen pills were tried as an experimental treatment after rape in 1960s and in 1972, Canadian physician A. Albert Yusbe and his colleagues began systematic studies on the use of ethinylastradiol ethinyl and norgestrel to provide emergency contraception after an assault. Dirt these treatments reduce the rate of pregnancy after rape by 84%. So malaki na itulong noon sa mga rape victims na naging pregnant. So nabawasan nito ang pagiging pregnant ng mga rape victims. This method is now called the use pay regimen. Before being treated with pregnancy prevention measures, a rape victim is given a HCG pregnancy test to determine whether she was already pregnant before the rape. So doon inaalam kung uh, pregnant na ba talaga bago pa ma-rape or kaya naging pregnant ay dahil na rape. Next po. Decisions of whether to end a rape-related pregnancy or carry it to term and whether to keep the child or place the child for adoption can be severely traumatizing for a woman. Abortion rates for pregnancies due to rape vary significantly by culture and demographics. Women who live in countries where abortion is illegal must often give birth to the child or sec secretly undergo a dangerous back alley abortion. So ayun daw po, um, mas maraming cases ng mga nagiging pregnant women due to rape ay sa mga bansang illegal ang abortion. Dahil siyempre, siguro, alam ng mga offender na illegal ang abortion. Kaya, yun. 
Some women do not wish to get abortions for a religious or cultural reasons. Ito naman po yung kahit masama na yung kanilang dinanas, ayaw pa rin nilang ipa-abort kasi may paniniwala sila or may cultural reason sila para hindi gawin yung mga ganong bagay. In a third of cases, rape-related pregnancies are not discovered until the second trimester of pregnancy, which may reduce a woman's options, particularly if she doesn't have easy access to legal abortion or is still recovering from the trauma of the rape itself. Next po. In the United States, um, 1% of 1,900 women questioned in 1987 listed rape or incest as the reason for having an abortion. Of this, 95% named other reasons as well. A 1996 study of thousands of women of thousands of U.S. women showed that the pregnancies resulting from rape, 50% were aborted, 12% resulted in miscarriage, and 38% were brought to term and either placed for adoption or raised. Peer-reviewed studies have report, reported from 38% of American women to 90% of Peruvian adolescents carrying the pregnancy to term. Um, in Lima, Peru, where abortion is illegal, 90% of girls aged 12 to 16 who became pregnant through rape carried the child to term. Of all children born, 1% are placed for adoption. So mas mataas dito yung parang ano nila, pag-keep pag nila kaysa sa pagpapa-adapt. The number of children conceived from rape who are placed for adoption was found to be about 6% in one study and 26% in another. When a mother commits neonaticide, killing an infant younger than 24 years old, the child's birth being the result of rape is main cause. Although other psychological and situational factors are generally present, some people turn to drugs or alcohol to cope with the emotional trauma after a rape. Use of this during pregnancy can harm the fetus. So yun, um, ang epekto nito sa mga rape victims ay mas lalo pang dumodoble kasi syempre, uh, depressed na nga sila sa nangyari sa kanilang buhay. Hindi nila matanggap na ganun, napapa lulong pa sila sa mga bisyo dahil akala nila yung magsasalba sa kanila pero yun yung mas nagpasama ng sitwasyon. Next po. So, other reporter na po. Hello po. Julia Palas po ulit. So, konti na lang po. Uh, ang ahang pong area report ay tungkol sa subpina. So, ano yung subpina? A subpina is a process directed to a person requiring him to attend and to testify at the hearing or trial of an action or at any investigation conducted under the laws of the Philippines or for taking of his deposition. So, yung subpina, uh, kailangan siya sa court para sa mga katulad ng mga clarification, so iba't ibang bagay, ganyan. So, ang subpina, issued siya by the court before whom the witness is required to attend, the court of the place where the deposition be taken, um, the officer or body authorized by law to do so in connection with investigations conducted by said officer and any justice of the Supreme Court or of the Court of Appeals in any case of inv or investigation pending within the Philippines. So, yung subpina, kaya ko siya sinali dito kasi may question po akong sasagutin na about dyan. So, next slide po. Kinds of subpina. Uh, subpina ad testificandum or used to compel a person to testify in court. So, para mas madali natin Ang, ang pangsunod mo na pala ay subpoena duces tecum used to compel the production of books, records, things, or documents therein specified. So para mas madali natin ma-identify yung dalawa, tandaan natin na pag testi ay yung testify in court. 
testificando, testify in court. Yung isa naman, do documents. <laughs> Ayun, do natin yan matatandaan. So, sa ibang country, nakita ko, mayroon pa silang third na type. So, pero dito sa Philippines, dalawa lang. So, three things to do before responding to subpoenas. Una, contact ad administration and counsel ASAP. Yung ikokontak mo kung saan ba siya galing kasi baka mamaya hindi naman pala ano, hindi naman pala totoo. So, kailangan mong i-confirm kung, kung totoo ba yung, yung, yung natanggap mo. Next is check where the subpoena came from. Ayun nga, nakalagay naman doon kung sinong nag-issue, ganyan. So, i-confirm natin. Tapos, call the patient. So, kung if ever na ikaw ay doktor na natawag para mag para umaten sa subpoena um iko ta, uh, tatawagan mo yung patient mo kung okay lang ba sa kanya nalalabas yung mga records niya in court so next slide po yan how will you tell the judge that this woman is pregnant in a court hearing when you were subpoenaed so, presenting evidence in court such as medical records that will prove the claim of the woman being pregnant. So, kapag kasi pregnancy yung pinag-uusapan, tapos, um, for example, ako ay doctor ng patient, ng babae, na kailangan kong patunayan na bunti siya, um, ang pinaka-best way na i-prove yun ay through medical records. Kasi, ayun nga, bunti. So, paano mong papatunayan na, na buntis talaga siya? So, yung medical records yung pinakamakakatulong. Or kung ako naman ay doktor lang, tapos kailangan ko lang i-explain sa court na bakit yung parang paano ko papatunay na buntis to, pwede po ako mag-present ng mga facts na na nag-a-apply kung na, na buntis talaga ang babae yun. So, ayun lang po. Next po. Yan, hello. Ako na uli. Hello po, I'm Aubrey Herrera. So, yan, case discussion na po tayo. Uh, ito po ay uh, one of the cases na hinandel ng ating prof. Yay. So, yan. Uh, it's the case of People of the Philippines versus uh, Alberto Torrevillas e Abalaraw. Yan. So, ang ating uh, plaintiff at peli is the Solicitor General then the defendant appellant is Teresita C. Veles. Next slide po. Yan. Uh, bibigyan ko lang po kayo ng uh, brief na facts of the case. So, yan. Si Evelyn Kines was 20 years old at the time of the incidents on April 6, 1988 and on May 4, 1988. Uh, she was living in the same house with her mother and stepfather, Alberto Torrevillas, at the time of the incidents in question. So at 8 o'clock in the evening of April 6, 1988, Evelyn was inside the house. Her mother left for Nueva Ecija in the morning. So while Evelyn was cooking for dinner, Alberto called her. So when Evelyn went into their bedroom, Alberto pointed an almost foot-long knife at Evelyn's neck. He then later managed to insert his male organ inside Evelyn's female organ. Alberto remained on top of Evelyn for a long time. Evelyn could not estimate how long Alberto actually performed the intercourse. Uh, after consuming his desire, Alberto stood up and warned Evelyn not to tell her mother or grandmother about the incident. He then left the house. So, at about 8 o'clock in the evening naman of May 4, 1988, si Evelyn was alone uh, inside the house located at Petronia Street, Camarín, Caloocan City. Alberto, who was inside the house, called Evelyn and the latter approached him. Alberto pointed a knife on the right side of Evelyn's body. It was the same knife Alberto used in the evening of April 6, 1988. Yung sinasabi ko sa, kin sa inyo kanina, almost a foot-long knife. So, when Evelyn was already sleeping, when uh, her mother arrived from the market, and about 10 o'clock in the evening of May 4, 1988. Then, uh, fast forward, on September 28, 1988, Evelyn told her mother that her monthly menstruation failed to come on the end expected date. She was therefore brought to Dr. Susanna Uy for a checkup by her mother and grandmother at 8 o'clock in the evening 
of said day. However, uh, as a, and, I mean, as a result of the medical examination, uh, Evelyn was found to be pregnant uh, early the following day on September 29, 1988. Alberto warned Evelyn not to tell her mother anything. However, later in the evening, Evelyn's mother and grandmother it was then accompanied Ocon police officers on the her grandmother, Marcelina, to file a complaint against Alberto Torrevillas. Evelyn executed a sworn statement before the police. She then had herself examined at the medical legal unit of the NBI. Then, on February 9, 1989, next slide. Yeah. Evelyn gave birth to a baby boy, Joe, and on September 30, 1988, the complaining witness, Evelyn Pines, filed two separate complaints against Alberto Torrevilla before the regional court, Branch 124, Calaocan City, charging the accused with two crimes of rape. Then on October 11, 1998, the accused pleaded not guilty to the charges which were jointly tried. Evelyn positively identified the accused during the trial. The prosecution presented Dr. Noel Minai, a medical legal officer of the NBI, who testified that the complainant was about four months pregnant when she was brought to the NBI for examination and that she had, in, she had an old complete laceration in her hymen at six o'clock position, which were considered by him to be consistent with the complainant's claim that she was raped on May 4, 1988. The appellant, however, denied that he was in his house on April 6 and May 4. He maintained that the complainant resided with her grandmother and that the complainant had a boyfriend in 1988. The complainant's mother, Leticia Aguila, even testified for the defendant. She alleged that she did not go to Nueva Ecija on April 6 because the harvest season was in August and September. After the trial, the court rendered judgment uh, finding the appellant guilty of the crimes charge and sentenced him to suffer two penalties of reclusion perpetua. In this appeal, the appellant ascribes to the trial court the following errors. The first one is in unquestioningly accepting the uncorroborated testimony of the alleged victim and the second one is in convincing the accused of the crime charge, despite the failure of the prosecution to prove his guilt beyond reasonable doubt. The appellant, true counsel, contends that the trial court blindly accepted the uncorroborated testimony of the complaining witness, although her evidence did not clearly and convincingly show that the carnal acts were perpetrated on her person against her will. Uh, appellant discredits Evelyn's allegation that he pointed a knife at her neck for as a matter of fact she was not wounded uh, he argues that the vic that the victim's declaration that ito ha sabi to ni Evelyn at aking naramdaman na ang kutsilyo ay medyo bumaon sa aking tagiliran uh, ito kasi yung statement niyang yun uh, it was contradicted by the finding in the medical legal report this uh, uh, according to the medical a uh, legal report uh this a uh, general physical examination there is no extragenital physical injury noted in the conclusion uh, no evidence sign of extragenital physical injury noted on the body of the subject at the time of examination however the solicitor general uh correctly pointed out that evelyn never claimed that she was wounded by the appellant's knife her statement that the knife, uh, quote unquote, Buma on, qualified by the adverb medio, which is equivalent to somewhat or slightly, means that the knife was pressed somewhat against her neck. There is no merit in appellant's other arguments that he could not have used a knife for if he was if he had poked a knife at the victim's neck uh, while he undressed and draped her, she would have been wounded in the neck. 
uh, the absence of any wound or injury on the complainant's neck does not disprove her allegation that the appellant threatened her with a knife. Uh, absence of external signs or physical injuries does not negate the commission of rape. Intimidation can be addressed to the mind as well. So for the decision of the court, finding no reversible error in the decision of the trial court convicting the appellant, Alberto Torrevillas, of two crimes of rape, the same is hereby affirmed except the, word, the award of civil indemnity in the sum of 25,000 pesos for each count, which is hereby increased to 30,000 pesos or the total sum of 60,000 pesos for both counts. Lang po. Yun na po, tapos na po ang report namin. That concludes, that concludes our presentation. Thank you po sa Gusto niyo yung five minute break para ma-discuss natin yung sample report? Pwede po. Hmm, sige. Uh, five minute po. break. Ah, sige. Thank you po.
You there? Yes, po. Sige. Um, pwede ko nang ibalik, ibalik yung control sa akin? So, uh, that was an excellent presentation by the group. Um, ang add ko lang ay tatlong points. One, <coughs> um, yung halimbawa, meron ng gawang inheritance uh, will yung namatay tapos biglang nabuntis yung asawa pag nanganak yung asawa ma mababago na naman ang inheritance will na inexecute nung namatay niyang asawa naitindihan niyo Hello. Opo, sir. Um, pangalawa, pag ang babaeng nakakulong ay nabuntis, tapos eh, halimbawa, next week i-execute na siya, hindi pwedeng i-execute yun dahil buntis siya. Yan. Okay. So, a medical legal officer should examine the prisoner kung totoo ang buntis siya so that the stay of execution ay makakamit. Pangatlo, um, pwedeng gamitin nga yung pagbubuntis o pinaik na pagbubuntis sa para lang makapag uh, bigay ng threat kung kangino so we call that fraud okay so may tanong kayo sa mga reporters wala naman po Okay. So, ito na yung living case na sample natin. Madali na lang ito. So, it, this, this is a fictional report on medical legal. Uh, case, a living case, medical genital examination. So, kunwari sa Batangas, at ito yung numbers. Ito yung demographics ng complainant. So, she would be a female. Okay? Dapat female siya kasi siya nag... nag uh, tawag dito nag uh, alleged na may rape na nangyari although yung lalaki pwede ring mag-claim ng alleged rape okay uh, in between male and female yung mga in between na uh, sex na persons may also file uh, alleged rape okay so the age of the female is 21 years old and the date of birth is around January 10, 2000 and is single residing at Liverpool, Australia 
ang nationality niya British, accompanied by Annie Batumbakal as cousin. Some policemen may require the complainant to present a government photo ID. Yeah. Uh, to certify that she is the one named as Ryder Rosenblum E. Magdalena. Kasi pwedeng i-fake yung uh, pag-complain. Okay? So the nature of complaint is for sexual intercourse, which is illegal. Okay? So the incident should have a date you have july 2 and a time and so incident and the alleged assailant okay so in this case salvatore mayutuga male 25 years old residing in makati city how many assailants only one only a salient. Okay. So the place of forensic examination done was in Batanga City, September 1st at 9 o'clock. The incident was reported to the Mat Matula Police Station with a letter of referral from Captain John Salvin. Okay. Yeah. For the ring, Dumerekta si Miss Rosimlum sa isang police station na pwedeng ma-examine siya o sa NBI e, um, branch office na pwede siya ma-examine. Pwede siya doon mag-file directly. Okay. Pero usually, pag ginawa na yung examination sa isang major police branch, ay hindi na gagawin ng NBI yun kasi magdo-duplicate na yung mga reports. Okay. So, the history of the woman should include the LLMP, last menstrual period. So, ang LMP niya ay July 30, 2021. And the PMP, I previous me menstrual period, which is June 30, 2021, assuming that in cycle niya 30 days. See, last July, previous June. Okay. So, yung height in metric 165, weight 60 kilogram, and build the sleep. Ito, importante yan kung, kung malaki si Salvatore. So, hindi siya pwedeng mag, uh, ang tawag doon, yung makapag-build uh, ng resistance. So, the uh, clinical uh, vital signs are recorded. 120 over 80 blood pressure, pulse rate of 85, 18 of respiratory rate, and body temperature. So, hindi siya, wala siyang lagnat. So, continuing sa physical examination, merong physical examination, merong genital examination. So, so PE, she was described as alert, ambulatory, a febrile, no fever, conscious, coherent, consented to be examined, no external injury noted. Okay. Ito important ito. Pag incoherent siya, Yung pabago-bago ang kanyang sinasabi. Pag tinanong mo, nasaan ka ngayon? Sasabihin niya, nandito sa NBI office. Okay, she, she is coherent. 
Pero pag sinabi niyang nasa pag tinanong saan ka ngayon, nandito ako sa SM Mall sa EDSA, hindi siya coherent, incoherent siya. Kuha niya? Hello? Yes po. Uh, so, conscious. Pwede siyang conscious, hindi siya comatous, pero incoherent. Pwede siyang conscious, pero coherent. Okay. So, sa alleged rape, ang ini-examine ay breast, abdomen, uterus, and genital areas. Okay. Sa breast, sa discussion ng first group, nagbabago yung appearance ng breast. So, this is described here as breast, ito dapat S to, plural, fully developed, nipples protruding, non-tender, areola right brown, 4 cm, nipples 2.5 cm. So, female yan. Sa abdomen, Ang circumference niya ay ano pa siya, sexy, 34 cm. Kasi nangyari noon, uh, July 2 lang. Ang date of exam ay September. Maliit pa yung uterus niya. Kaya <coughs> yung uterus not palpable. Yung height ng pinakataas ng uterus from the symphysis pubis. Alam niyo yung symphysis pubis? Yan yung matigas na buto doon. Na pag sinalat nyo ay yan ang nagdudugtong yung right and left uh, balakang. Okay? So, fundicide, ibig sabihin, yung taas ng uterus is not appreciated kasi maliit pa nga. Fetal heart tone, not appreciated kasi maliit pa. Fetal parts, not appreciated. Okay. Although, this may show in a ultrasound scan kung more than Two months na yung pagka-pregnancy niya. Okay. Now, genital examination, no. Genital injury noted. Kasi, ano na, September 1st na, yung alleged na date ay July. So, July, August, September, two months na. Kaya, kaya na, Kaya walang external injury natin. No genital injury natin. Pero kung kahapon lang nangyari, maaring pwede pang makakita sa genital organs niya ng bruises o kaya contusion. So, abundant pubic hair, yung opening, intravitus, slight gaping. No discoloration. Yeah. So, yung Ito yung, yung Chadwick's uh, sign na binanggit ko nina sa report ay present sa maraming babae pag nabubuntis. However, pag naging iba-ibang babae, maaaring walang discoloration. Anal area, no injury. Okay. Kung meron man, wala nang makikita. Gawa ng uh, September 1st in examine nangyari July 2 as alleged. Okay. So the laboratory examinations should be done in this case is and was done was the beta chorionic gonadotropin pregnancy test which is positive. The ultrasound findings shows a 1.4 Centimeter single fetus. Okay. Ito, at saka ito, siguradong 
pregnant siya. So, conclusion, no physical extra and extragenital injury noted. Dapat may no yan. On Miss Ida Rosenblum E. Kaitap. So, pregnancy consistent with alleged date of offense, which is uh, July 2. Next, attachments should be attached to the records, like signed real narrative by Miss Rosenblum and witnessed by Annie Batumbaran, and a police request from Matulao, Batangas. Assuming that the police station at Matulao, Batangas is a small police station. Complaints form signed by the complainant. Informed consent signed by the complainant. Uh, ito dapat nakasign yung complainant kasi kung hindi niya sinign yan, hindi i-examinin niya ng um, medical legal officer sa police o sa NBI. Okay. Then the photo ID with the case number, medical genital examination. Ito importante ito kasi pag Lumabas na ang halimbawa, court hearing or sabina. Ito ay nagpapatunay na ito ang muka ng taong pumunta sa NBI na nag na nagpa-examine na ang pangalan ay si Ida Rosenblum. Pregnancy test result from forensic, forensic chemistry. Ultrasound result from a private imaging clinic. So ito, bakit private? Um, hindi lahat ng NBI branch office ay merong ultrasound. Okay. Pero usually, sa mga ganitong kaso, tinatanong muna ng complainant kung pwedeng magpa-ultrasound dahil ka may kaso ito. Some private imaging clinics, yung mga radiology uh, clinics, ay pwedeng umayaw kasi wala silang time na kung sakaling magkaroon ng hearing at bibigyan sila ng sabina. Ducis ticum et testificandum. Ibig sabihin, ducis ticum records, et means end, and testificandum, yung magtitestify, yung mag appear So the plan, after you say you are the doctor, ang plano mo ay repair the, repair Ida for pregnancy care into her uh, regular doctor to include blood test, HIV, HEP, Hepatitis A, B, and C, syphilis. So, di, ito yung STD screening. Uh, sexually transmitted diseases screening, which includes syphilis, gonorrhea, uh, etc. Um, hindi natin sure na itong si... Si... Uh, Sabatory ay walang STD, yung sexually transmitted diseases. Okay. Next, referral to a forensic psychologist and social worker for counseling just in case um, merong abiria sa um, mga narrative rep, narrative uh, sign document ni Miss Ida o kung uh, ang option ni Ida ay magpa-counsel sa forensic psychologist dahil sa trauma na, na nangyari sa kanya. So, the forensic medical officer will sign the document okay, on the Say September 4, 
21. Yeah. Bakit September 4? Kasi gagawa pa ng report, itatype pa, tapos ipa-finalize pa while awaiting for the results of the um, of the ultrasound scan and pregnancy test report from forensic chemistry so yan ang ating um, lesson ngayon next week are you prepared for a small quiz Hello. Regarding po sa report, sir, yes po. Okay. So, ano oras na? 5.45 sa inyo ay 3.45 na. So, kung may question sila sa reporter at saka doon sa sample uh, um, NBI report, Kaya pala pamiliar sa akin yung pinresent ng report, re, reporters dun sa Torrebillas. Yung pala yung kasang binigay sa inyo, ano? <laughs> yes. So, kung wala ng question, that ends our Um, uh, reporting and activity today. You break. Pwede mo sa akin padala ay ano? <coughs> Attendance. Sige po. Uh, so sir, sige, stay safe. Ay, sir, may question po ako. Ano? Kailan po kaya po ang reporting po ng PDF coffee po? Ah, uh, ano ba yung sa PDF? <clears throat> Yun po, ano po, autopsy po, nung pong si... Shooting? Ni Milagros Supil autopsy po. Milagros. Oh, sige, uh, four weeks. Mm. Okay po, thank you po. Four weeks. Oh. Uh, nung previous uh, course niya, Forensic Medicine 1, Um, makipag-coordinate kayo kay Miss G. Pedregosa dahil meron siyang compilation ng mga autopsy report uh, as lectured in St. Luke's Hospital in Manila. Pwede na? So that ends our today's session. So wala nang question. We'll end this. Eh, you, Miss, Miss Yubri, si send ko sa'yo maya maya yung uh, uh, schedule of reports at quizzes ulit. Although nag-send na ako sa'yo noon. Hmm. Tanda mo. <laughs> so, merong nagtatanong kung kailangan bumili ng libro ni Dr. Olarte, yung volumes 1 and 2. You can, kung meron kayong extra money, ang maganda lang doon, it's a uh, updated form, especially sa Philippine laws. Uh, unlike yung kay Solis, uh, yung ibang laws na binabanggit niya. Pwedeng still applicable today, pero hindi niya covered yung mga genetic tests saka yung mga stem cells. Itong kay Attorney Olarte, na isa rin doktor, ay covered yung stem cells. O kaya, you just uh, read on the uh, 
topic of stem cells and other updated laws on that book. Pwede naman kayo hindi bumili kasi abutin ng mga 2,005 yung volumes 1 and 2. Okay? Stay safe. Thank you po, sir. Okay. Thank you po. Uh, Thank you po, sir. Thank you, Ren. Thank you po. Salamat po. Um.